may seem odd to you to hear that your spouse is grieving as they're going through affair recovery following an affair. That may seem weird because perhaps you've only really recognized grief as a time when someone has lost a loved one to death. Grieving is very real and grieving is not just about when someone dies. Grieving is how we respond to loss. When we have experienced loss in our lives, we grieve. Now, of course, there's varying degrees of this. Um, for instance, someone who has witnessed or, or experienced someone passing away that they really loved a whole lot, they were really close to, of course, is going to have a different grieving length and process than someone who, say, moved away from a beloved neighborhood and you know, lost uh, their friends and, and the comfort of knowing that area and they really miss their neighborhood, that kind of thing. That loss is going to be felt, it's going to be grieved, but it might look a little bit different. But either way, it's grief. In a fair recovery, those of us who've been betrayed, and I am um, a betrayed spouse, those of us who've been betrayed go through a grieving process. And I want to kind of help unpack that a little bit for you so that you can better understand why your spouse is going through such um, incredible emotion right now incredible intense emotion and why it seems to be a bit of a roller coaster okay so if you know the kubler ross grief uh, stages of grief um you know you've got shock and denial bargaining uh, anger depression and acceptance in a fair recovery there's actually an extra stage they've added specifically for those of us who've been betrayed it's called obsession <laughs> and so you may have experienced your spouse feeling you know acting a bit obsessed about this that or the other this process of grief any grief process actually is healthy it's not bad it is hard <laughs> it's hard it's very emotional but it's very healthy you see our brains are built in such a way that extreme emotional intensive trauma pain things like that <clears throat> could be really difficult for our brain to process if we were forced to process all of it at one time if we had to feel in one moment all of the stuff associated with someone we love for instance tragically dying our brain couldn't handle it. We would probably disassociate from it and it would be very unhealthy. The stages of grief kind of came to be because it was an understanding that our brains were built to process this type of tremendous pain in stages <laughs> so that we're processing it in bits over time. It's a healthy way to process. In other words, it allows us to feel all the stuff associated with that loss, but do it over time. Now, in a fair recovery, you may be asking yourself, well, what have they lost? Especially if you have agreed to stay in the marriage and work toward reconciliation, you may say, well, what loss? They, my, my betrayed spouse hasn't lost anything. Oh, yes, we have. Here's what we've lost. We have lost the sense of security we had with the person we trusted most. We have lost the ability to feel comfortable and relaxed in our own marriage. We have lost um, the man we thought, well, in my case, or let me change that because I know men watch this too. Um, we have lost the idea of the spouse we thought we married. The person we thought we married. We're having to come to grips with seeing this person through the lens of what they're capable of doing. It's hard. It's hard to wrap our brains around that. We have lost some of our hopes and dreams of what our future could look like. As a matter of fact, and I just want you to understand this, for many betrayed spouses, and I'm going to put myself in this category, 
it was really hard for a while to picture a happy future with my spouse because it was hard to imagine feeling that level of happy and safe and comfortable again because I felt so incredibly unsafe for a while. So that's a loss. <laughs> What I thought our future would be, it was hard to imagine that again. We feel tremendous loss. We feel loss for our children because there is this part of us that wonders, is this even going to work? You know, what if we end up divorcing and our, our kids have to go through that? We carry a tremendous amount of loss. We grieve heavily. Now, grief is a lot like the whole pain of what we're going through. Okay, In many ways, we carry grief forever. This goes with if you did lose a loved one, it go, any loss is a, a loss is a loss. You don't get it back. If something is lost to you, it is lost. Now, things can be rebuilt. I'll use the moving example that I, I, I used before. Perhaps you live in a beloved cul-de-sac and you know all of your neighbors and you guys have cookouts every weekend and your kids play with their kids and it's a safe space and you feel really safe in this spot. But then you have to pick up and move and you grieve the loss of that. You grieve the loss of that community and you grieve all that. Now that doesn't mean that this new neighborhood you move into, you can't love that neighborhood too, but it's not the same, right? You got to rebuild these relationships. You got to find stuff to love about this area. And you're always though going to feel to some degree the loss of that previous community. You're going to carry that grief forever. You're going to have those memories and you're going to miss it same goes in a fair recovery okay we're going to carry this grief we're going to carry this grief forever now that doesn't mean we're going to feel the grief to the level at which we would at the beginning forever it's going to mean that that loss is going to remain and we have to figure out how to get through our grief and get on the other side of that this hopefully explains a little bit about why your spouse may be emotional and please understand, grief is not linear. Mm -mm. We don't start here at grief and go through this phase and this phase and this phase, and then we come out on the other side and never grieve again. Grief can resurface, especially around the one year mark of finding out about the affair. We struggle quite heavily with our grief and it is a natural process. Now we don't call that up, by the way. It just happens. We remember dates, we remember situations, we remember where we were um, when we start putting the timeline together and realize that uh, on this anniversary and on, on, on this trip with our family that perhaps our spouse was talking to the affair partner or maybe that was the first time they met up was at this location. I mean, there are things that are going to be imprinted in us and we're going to remember and that memory will stir our grief and it's hard it's really hard on us we're not crazy we will not endure this forever is at that level but we will carry it forever your role as a spouse who had an affair your role is to just support us through it one great way that you could help is to take our hand and look at us and just say, I see you're hurting. How can I help you through this? Maybe there's nothing you can do. Maybe we say nothing, just, I just gotta get through this. I just gotta feel through it. Or just hug me. Or just, just listen. <laughs> just tell me you love me and that you're here for me. Tell me you're going to stay faithful to me. Whatever it is that your betrayed spouse tells you in that moment, that's how you lean in. Grief is a process. It is not linear 
and your spouse is doing the best they can do to get through this. Your spouse is not crazy. <laughs> I know it seems like it, and trust me, I kind of felt crazy sometimes. It is a natural process that we need to get through. Okay, so we just need you to be there. We need you to understand and validate our feelings and be present and lean in when you can. <laughs>